I am Daniel Zangle with PRP Labs here at Don Lipscomb, and we're going to be talking about using platelet-rich plasma to treat stretch marks. So stretch marks are a pretty ubiquitous condition that can be caused by many things, whether that's gaining weight, losing weight, having a child, mm -hmm. you know, growing up. I mean, there, there's so many different yeah. things that can cause stretch marks. And um, this study that we're going to be talking about today investigates how the use of PRP injections can help stretch marks compared to uh, a more common therapeutic approach, which is just a, a standard microderm abrasion. Uh, so Don, can you tell us a bit about this study? Sure. So um, the authors enrolled 68 patients, um, and they basically divided them into three groups. One was um, intradermal PRP injections, so mind you, this is going all the way into into mm. the skin, like to get to the deeper layers right. of the tissue. Um, group two was just microderm abrasion, so you're mm. just getting that resurfacing of the skin. Mm. And then group three was the intradermal PRP after the microderm abrasion. Right, got it. And, um, and what did we find? <laughs> so, uh, so overall, it was great for PRP. So the first group and the second group after these treatments, or I mean the first group and the third group, which were both treated with PRP, right and one had the microderm abrasion, mm -hmm. they showed um, statistically significant results uh, over just the microderm abrasion group right. alone. Okay. I mean, uh, so the authors took skin biopsies and they did a subjective evaluation and then more of like an objective evaluation where the clinicians actually just look at the photographs mm -hmm. before and after. Right, so. right, yeah. So they're looking before and after with photographs at these, mm -hmm. these stretch marks and then also with the skin biopsies, they're running a number of various tests. Exactly. What, what exactly were they looking at? So they're looking uh, to see if the elastic fibers had increased, which they had. Okay. Um, they, they saw that they had increased it not only in number, but in length, okay. and then they were more uniform. Right. Um, and uh, for the photographs, just overall, the composition of the skin was right. much more uniform. Stretch marks greatly reduced in appearance. Right. Um, and overall, the patients reported being pretty pleased. That's great. So. Yeah, I, I liked how robust this study was in the sense that they had the more subjective analysis, which was like the, the photographs, right, before mm -hmm. and after photographs. And, and they had dermatologists looking at these photographs. I mean, these are people who know what constitutes an improvement. Um, but then they also have this more objective uh, aspect of the study where they're looking at the skin biopsies exactly. and, and looking at what's happening physically to the tissue. Exactly. They're just doing a before and after. And, and so the researchers think that the mechanism of action for this is um, by the growth factor we all know and love, transforming growth factor beta, being released. One of my favorites. Being released <laughs> from alpha granules found in PRP, yeah. which are found in platelets, which mm -hmm. is found in PRP. Um, and additionally, PRP is known to... Um, increased hyaluronic acid production, right. which we all know that this increases uh, sort of the, the voluminous lubrication lub and uh, qualities that fill up tissue. Right, yeah, because yeah. hyaluronic acid injections are used as dermal fillers, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll, they'll do an HA injection to plump somebody's face up. or Exactly. And, and so you're saying that the platelets just naturally are going to cause an increase exactly. of, of hyaluronic acid in the mm -hmm. area. And so this, this could be also providing more. So like say you have some sort of depression or like mm -hmm. inconsistency in your skin, you yeah. put the hyaluronic acid that could help build that scaffold sort of for, for, this, uh, for this new tissue to be built upon. Right. You know, and also providing the necessary nutrients and moisture right. for the cells. Right so. now, and and in the study, I noted, I noticed that they said the PRP group and then the microderm abrasion plus the PRP. Mm -hmm. There was no statistically significant difference between those two groups. Right? No, and so maybe this indicates that rather than going and getting, you know, a sand sand treatment on your skin, yeah. maybe you could get a few injections. Right, I don't, right, it's yeah. Just, you know, something to think about. Right. Maybe. Yeah. It didn't yeah. perform worse. It, no. it doesn't seem like microderm mm -hmm. abrasion will, will hurt. No. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like it's, it, at least as far as this study indicates, there's any mm -hmm. advantage to doing microderm plus PRP. Uh, it seems to be at least as uh, efficacious to just do PRP. Exactly. All right, Don. Well, thank you for coming by this week. And uh, this will be our last video for the day. Uh, but we will as always, have more videos coming in the following week. So please uh, check out our blog and our YouTube and Facebook pages, and you will be able to catch our latest videos.